All right. Thank you, Mike. All right. Let's begin uh, the May 5th workshop meeting, as we always do, with the Pledge to the Flag. Okay, first up is the superintendent's report. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here in our uh, former gymnasium slash cafeteria slash multi-purpose room, current courtroom for the town of Marlboro. And also thank you for joining us on our YouTube page. My report is very short tonight. Um, tonight you will hear our budget hearing. Ms. Mealy is going to present our official budget hearing. It is an oddity of the state of New York that there is an official rolling out of the budget after the board has adopted it, I'm sure it's saturated somewhere in ancient law in New York State that prior to the internet and any other normal form of communication, you have to have this formal, here is the budget, so that's tonight. Um, we also have the long form of the budget and all the budget documents prepared that are, again, by rule and regulation, required to be printed and placed in each of the schools, so those are available in our schools. I also want to remind everyone, which will also be part of our budget hearing, our budget vote and trustee elections are in this room, in the town court um, uh, building here in Milton on May 17th from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And we encourage every registered voter to come down and, um, and vote, your, um, uh, vote your ballot, please. I uh, also want to note that Deb Clinton is up at a conference in Albany uh, for the official notice or semi-official notice regarding the middle school being designated as a New York State school to watch. A fantastic guest. I know that it was noted at a prior meeting, but I, I just want to note that she's up there. I know Ms. Hector joined her for part of that, and um, we expect to have a, a presentation for the board. Um, soon and then I believe there's more of a official celebration that the group is planning at the state level next school year so uh, very very exciting um, accomplishment and really it's not an end it's just a continuous um, improvement loop and really proud of those folks down at the middle school for being designated as a school to watch and with that I have nothing else to report all right, thank you, Mike. Next up is the Ulster and Orange, Ulster Boses and Orange Ulster Boses reports. And I'll hand that over to you, Karen, please. Hi, um, no meeting for Ulster Boses, so that one's going to be quick. Um, Orange Ulster Boses, the Oxbaugh report, um, was, was May 5th, and we had um, uh, Mid Hudson Study Council speaking to us. It was still a Zoom. Uh, the Mid Hudson Study Council is out of. Um, Mount St. Mary College. Um, they reminded the districts to make sure that they do their education survey. They do it yearly. Um, what was interesting, they were talking about the education survey and many of the um, issues that are colleges, they actually give their findings to and New York State Ed who requests it and um, also the 16 colleges in the area that tend to feed our schools. And some of the responses that they've gotten back, like um, problem-based learning, uh, many of the school districts in the Mid-Hudson region said that they didn't, um, had they gotten new teachers and they really didn't have enough training in problem-based learning. So what six of those um, colleges did, the 14 in the area, is they added problem-based learning courses into the um, structure of their their education program so they're looking at you know what you're going to be hiring in um, three years what you're going to be hiring in six years so they really hoping the school districts fill that out because what's happening now is they're finding that new york mid hudson area uh, we tend to be a really good predictor for what's going to happen in the state so uh, nysed is asking for that information um, more than those colleges are asking for that information than just our area um, there's some programs that we can't even get in our area anymore Education in all the colleges in our area, enrollment is down 40%. I'm going to say that again. I think everybody needs to hear that. Education in our area, um, the education programs, um, on average, are down 40%. So some programs might even be closing because the numbers are so small in education um, with kids going into it. So it's really um, an area that needs to be looked at. 
Um, the other, there's certain fields that just you can't get in our area anymore, um, family and consumer science, they were saying. Um, they were also saying that you can't get, um, and there's no training in our area for PE. Um, so there are certain teachers that are going to be coming up that there are no training for in our area and it's going to be really, really hard to um, find teachers to fit those areas and they're trying to work with state ed on how we can get people in those areas quickly. Um, one other thing that um, they mentioned is business officials. There are no business officials in our area. Uh, Ulster County is looking for four, um, Orange County is looking for a few, and don't forget the Mid-Hudson region has about eight um, eight counties that it deals with, four primarily where they're going to hold the meetings. They're going to do the meetings now um, county by county in the four counties in the area. Um, but um, And the next meeting is May 12th. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you, May 12th was the next meeting, and um, that's going to be in Rockland, uh, Rockland County in northern Rockland. And um, a former employee assistant superintendent of our district, uh, Terry Reynolds, that moved to Orange Ulster Boces as an assistant superintendent, is being recognized nationally for an award that she's getting at that meeting for, um, and it, but through the Mid-Hudson Study Council as well. So it's important to um, note that. Um, going back to the business officials, they um, got finally approved through the NYSED that administrators that have an SDL certification or an SDA certification can go back to school through um, and take four classes, two classes in the spring, two classes in the summer. Um, tonight, as we're speaking right now, they're holding a webinar with the 12 candidates that are going to be in that program, and they plan on turning out next summer. 12 certified um, business officials for the region, and the program will keep continuing. Um, the program is designed to serve people in our community that belong to the Mid-Hudson Study Council. Um, and the other thing that they wanted us to tell everybody was that um, the Study Council, uh, August 5th, they are having the law conference, which is excellent. I always attend the law conference, highly encourage people to go. Um, and the, uh, August 5th is going to be the next law conference, and it's in person, which is huge. So, yeah, and it's at Mount St. Mary College. All right, thank you, Karen. Any questions for Karen from the board? Okay, next oh, up. There's one more thing I forgot sure. to tell you. I'm doing it by memory, I apologize. DEI Committee, Diversity, Equity, and Conclusion. Um, Reverend Jones came back to us from the state committee that's um, through um, uh, New York State School Boards Association. There's two courses coming down. Um, they are going to be out in June. Um, the first course is understanding the DEI process, and the other is what do board members have to understand about DEI. And they're predicting uh, the board member one is going to be mandated as a third course. Sorry about that. I, that was the other no, thing. that's good. Um, we, if, if we're, we should all be aware of that when it comes out and take Sorry it because it is clearly a, a, you know a direction things are going. And as we talked about this before, it's complicated. The little bit that we I've read about it is potentially a huge change and go, gets interwoven with curriculum, with, with how you manage it, how you measure it, and it can go from anywhere from, you know, minor changes to a whole structural change depending on what you do with it. So we need to understand it first and then, then even before you can even begin to think about what to do with it, right? Because it's, and it will be mandated at some point probably, so you rather take your own direction rather than wait for somebody to tell you how. So yeah, whatever we get that, let's, um, let's make sure we bring it up here. If you see it first, Karen, I know you tend to see that first. All right, the next up would be the Board of Education student rep, Katerina Calderon, and she's not here this evening. She unfortunately wasn't feeling well, but she has asked me to read her report, so I'll do that for her. Um, I would like to start off by saying happy Teachers Appreciation Week to all of the hardworking teachers in our community. In the high school report, she has written, in the past two weeks, both New York State senators that represent our region have visited MHS and met with our Youth and Government Club. We thank Senators Hinchy and Scoofus for their time and listening to our students. The prom was held last Thursday at Villa Venezia. Everyone had a wonderful time. The Iron Duke's invitation was held this past Friday. The graduating seniors were honored in a ceremony midway through the meet. Congratulations to Dominic Valentino on breaking a 50-year track record in the 1600 race. I'd like to congratulate Board of Ed Education Representative Trinity Pagan, or Pagan, I'm sorry, on her enlistment with the Marine Corps. Spring sports are extremely active this week. 
AP exams at the high school will take place at the end of this week and next week. The spring concert is, uh, is, May, is Wednesday, May 11th at 7 p.m. FCCLA will be having a pasta dinner at the high school on May 12th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And FCCA, FCCLA will also be hosting a paint night on May 16th from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. In the middle school, New York math testing was held this Monday and Tuesday. Next Tuesday, the music department will host a coffee house concert at 5.30 p.m., open to the public, I'll add. Next Wednesday and Thursday, approximately 40 students and seven faculty members will be trained in the Safe School Ambassador Program. This is a valued program that we have used in the past at the middle school, and we are excited to bring it back to the building. The Safe School Ambassadors Program, SSA, is an evidence-based program that harnesses the power of students to prevent and stop bullying. It's a social-emotional learning program that is student-centered. It educates diverse social leaders with the skills to prevent and reduce bullying. In the elementary school, New York State math testing for grades three to five was completed this week. The PTA will be hosting a book fair next week, Tuesday through Friday. MES will be participating in the district art show located at Frida's on May 17th. There are field trips taking place this month for all of the grades. Field days, field days will be taking place Monday, May 23rd for the fourth and fifth graders, Tuesday, May 24th for kindergarten and first grade, and on Wednesday, May 25th for second and third grade. The rain date is scheduled for Thursday, May 26th. The Memorial Day Assembly will take place Thursday, May 26th at Monuments on the middle school lawn. And last one, the elementary school will be participating in the Memorial Day Parade. There will be a MES float. The parade is Sunday, May 29th and at 1 p.m. and starts off at the Locust Grove Brewing Company in Milton. Okay, that was for Katerina. I'd ask if you had any questions, but can't answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, next up would be our board candidates who are running for office on the May 17th election. We've invited them to come up and speak. We will go by the order of the ballot, which was pulled by, you know, in a hat type thing. And we'll start with Mr. Frank Malazzo. Um, we have written down that we'll have three minutes to speak about the candidacy. Um, I don't know about you, but I can't say hello in three minutes, so we'll stretch that a little bit, but let's try to be conscious of time. I know. Thank you, John. Thank you, Frank. I won't, I won't go over. Um, I just wish, I'd like the community to remember to come out May 17th and vote. It's very important, although the budget tax levy is going down 6%, it's still important for the community to get out and vote and show their support for the candidates and the budget. Um, I believe my nine years that I previously served on the board provide me with enough experience and background and understanding of the process uh, and I would like to be able to take that and be able to give back to the community again and uh, to again serve on the board. Uh, although the board is reducing the levy this year, I still believe that the fund balance is too high and that we should be doing more to reduce uh, the tax levy and we added a lot of positions this year. I know with a lot of things going on, they feel they're necessary, but I think we also have to look with everything that's going on to further reduce the burden on the taxpayers, and I think that's critical. We have a great school district, which is evident by the major awards that have been received this year, but we need to do more to reduce the tax levy. Um, it, it is a burden, and it does put us at a disadvantage. Although we are, we've come way down from where we were, on the per pupil cost comparatively over the last several years, um, I think we can do better. So thank you, and I hope everybody comes out and votes. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. All right, next up is Joanne Reed. Good evening, everyone. Um, just let you all know I am very nervous, uh, like always. Okay, so good evening, m members of the community, Board of Education. My name is Joanne Reed. I am rerunning for my seat on the Board of Education that I have served proudly for 10 years. I'm a mother of two young, two young men with disabilities 
that have gone through Marlboro School District, and I am honored to say that they graduated. Many of my friends and colleagues and neighbors, children's neighbors who are going through the school district, I can honestly say I am proud to represent all students and all children. Let me share you with you some time through the Marlboro School District. Through the years, I have volunteered for special education as a parent member for CSE, CPSE, acting as an advocate for children with special needs and IEPs to receive special to receive their services that were needed. Supporting the parents, caregivers, and children as and will always be important to me. As a community member, I've been coming to board meetings since my children were very young. Along the way, I have had to fight for many things for children in special education as well as my own children. Encouraging the district to bring back the life skills class back to the district to save money at the same time it is so important so, for so many students in our district. Being part of the teachers and the volunteers who brought Special Olympics to our district is such a proud moment. Seeing the children who participated win medals beam with pride is priceless. Now I'm going to speak about my time being on the Board of Education. Over the last 10 years, I have been part of the Board of Education, and we've gone through so many t tough times and good times. We lost educational programs and staff when working and, bringing, bring, and then working hard and bringing them back, adding money to the levy to give some tax relief. And of course, the last three years during the pandemic, watching and learning about our t with our teachers um, taking the hardest times in the history of our children. All the children, students, teachers, parents, caregivers had to learn remote learning and remote learning is everything, was anything short of amazing. I have to give each and every one of you a huge amount of credit and thank you each and every one for your hard work and de dedication. And I have to equally say, I am very proud of Marble Central School District for everyone that works here and all their dedication through the pandemic. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And cheers that we are back. Um, I am very proud of the board and how we, how we have our differences, but we air them out, we talk, we collaborate, we have resolutions for our school and our community. I am not a public speaker, but I am transparent. I am not afraid of asking questions. I uh, try hard to be financially responsible and hold the school district accountable for the way tax dollars are spent. I always represent Marlboro proudly and show my support for all the groups of students by attending as many events as I can, academic, sports, art, music, volunteering to go to conferences to learn and bring back the information and the knowledge to the rest of the board and the district. If I'm allowed to continue, I will do it with pride. I ask you please to trust me and support me as I continue to serve on the Board of Education. Come out on vote on May 17th, Joanne Reed, number two on the ballot, and thank you for your time. Okay, next up would be Rebecca Rhodes Boykin, and I don't see her here this evening. Um, so we'll jump to number four on the ballot, Jeffrey Hacker. I too don't speak well in public, but I'm gonna try. So first of all, I wanna thank everyone for coming out. And I also wanna wish all my fellow candidates Good luck, best of luck, and good luck for the uh, vote. So hi, my name is Jeff Hacker. I'm a lifelong resident of Ulster County. My wife owns Luna Enchanted across from CVS. When my wife and I decided to purchase our home, we chose Marble Central School District because of its outstanding reputation of excellence in education, in arts and sports. Our daughter, Ella, has excelled here 
and is a member of the National Junior Honor Society. As a father, I have an interest in what's been happening in our schools, and I've been attending the school board's meetings in person and virtually um, to keep up what's been going on. As a father, I would like to see some of the positive changes that we have had in the past several years continue. But I also would like to see more diversity, inclusion, and equity in our, for our children of our school district, where no child is left behind. And they will have an equal and fair opportunity at education. As a taxpayer, I would like to see fiscal transparency and accountability. I believe that the taxpayers and parents should be aware of what we're spending our money on for the children. I have been watching the Marble Central School District social media accounts, and I have to say it warms my heart when all these young people are doing. It gives me great hope for our future. I have been working in the computer field since 1992. Yes, 1992. I started my career at Dutchess Community College working in the computer graphics lab, and I also and also for the Community Services Department as an adjunct professor teaching computer classes. From there, I went to work for the Department of Transportation in the Computer Department. Can you see a the theme? Um, I moved on to St. Francis when we, we merged with Fayette Brothers. Then I went to work for Mohawk Mountain House. All doing end user support, inventory, hardware support, server support. Then, in August 2002, I was hired as a microcomputer network support technician for the Arlington Central School District. This August starts my 21st year with the district. So I've been supporting teachers, administrators, office, and other staff for over 30 years. What I have learned on this journey is to treat people with respect, kindness, and listen to their problems, and come up with solutions. I would apply this to the position of board trustee if I'm elected. I am asked why. I would run for the board. I have a favorite quote. Ask, what not, ask not what your country could do for you, ask what you could do for your country. I'm adapting this to ask not what your school can do for you, ask what you could do for your school. If I'm elected, I, if I am elected, you have my pledge that I will advocate for students, teachers, administrators, and other support staff. I would support the amazing teachers and staff that make our district great. I support the arts and sports. My goal is to be a positive influence on young minds, fiscally responsible and transparent, bringing respect back to the table. I will also bring my work ethic, problem solving skills, and people skills, along with my positive attitude to the job, our children, our community, our future. I want to thank the amazing teachers for all you do. I also want to thank all the support staff, like the custodians the food workers, all amazing. During the pandemic in my, in my school district, the food services department was awesome, just like this the district. And just come out May 17th and vote. Thank you all. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, number five on the ballot, Karen Brooks. Good evening, I'm Karen Brooks, current Board of Ed trustee seeking re-election as a Marlboro Board of Ed trustee. I'm candidate number five on the row at the very end. <laughs> um, it has been a pleasure the last three years really serving Marlboro as a Board of Ed member and a trustee. I'm grateful and honored to have had this position and to have had this experience. Over the past three years, I've, had met, I've met so many wonderful people in our community. I thought I just about knew everybody and there were still more people that I hadn't met before and I got to meet and make new connections and new friends. But I'm asking you to please pick me to serve again on this Board of Education for another three years. Um, I would love to serve um, I would love to serve the district again in this capacity and our children. In this election, we have five candidates, wonderful candidates running. I'm proud to run against these fine candidates. I think all five of us would do a wonderful job on the board, so I think you have a good selection to go, go through. Um, I'm asking you to select me. <laughs> and um, one of the things I can tell you is it's not an easy job. 
and I have averaged about 10 to 15 hours a week going through board packets, attending monthly meetings, committee meetings, uh, subcommittee meetings, um, attending um, Board of Education countywide meetings such as Ulster BOCES and Orange Ulster BOCES, and subgroup meetings on those committees as well, um, attending NASBO uh, New York State School Board's con conferences and trainings, and I, I enjoyed an, the honor of actually representing Marlboro Schools in that capacity, and I hope to get to do that again in the next three years. I've brought a lot of wonderful information back to our board and to our schools. Um, the Marlboro community has been my home, and I do have to say, I've lived here for 40 years, and I do not know any other home. My husband and I have about another 10 years of working, and we plan to retire and stay uh, after that in Marlboro. We don't plan on going anyplace else. So this is our home, and we're very dedicated to it. I'm a mother of a 13-year-old, an eighth grader in the Marlboro Middle School. I'm a wife. My husband, Michael, is here tonight. Um, I'm also a business owner uh, in our community, and I continue to run on the platform of fiscal transparency and quality schools. We brought the tax levy down 2% last year, and we're looking at it down another 7% this year. I am concerned about a few things that the other candidates have mentioned, but again, it's a board um, decision where we go, and next year is another year. And we have many things, economic situations, that will put light into that when we get to that next year. I'm running on the platform of diversity, equity, and inclusion, that every student has a fair chance and an equal access. I'm also running on the, the, my primary and where my heart lies, and that's putting students first above everything else in our community. Why am I running for the board again? Several reasons. I've enjoyed it. I actually had a very good time on the board the last three years. I like agreeing and disagreeing with these people. Uh, there are wonderful minds on this board, wonderful minds in this district. Um, I, I, have loved, I, I have a love for learning. I'm a lifelong learner, and I have a great admiration for the entire educational community in this district. And it's everyone working as a team that makes me really want to continue with this success, because this is a true community that comes together and works as a team. Um, giving back is also an important part for me. Um, I have been in education for 30 years, 23 as a district administrator level administrator. Um, I've been a teacher. Um, I've, been, uh, I've actually been a teacher's aide. I've been a teacher, um, I've, and I've been an administrator. I've been a teacher union president. I've been an administrative union president, and I've done negotiations at both levels. I'm a certified school district administrator. I'm a certified school business administrator. I'm a reading specialist, K-12, an elementary education, K-6, social studies and science. I've taught 7 through 12. Uh, I'm a local assistive technology evaluator. I'm considered a math specialist and a curriculum specialist. And again, I've worked as a, a teaching assistant, a teacher, and an administrator, a total of 30 years. Most importantly, being elected is important to me for my commitment to continued quality education and development of our most precious treasure that we could ever have, our children. So this fall, this is one thing that always goes through my mind every fall, and I'm going to ask you to look at the same thing. Fall of 2022-23, I look at the Marlboro Elementary School and the kindergartners that are coming in. They're going to be known as the class of 2035. And I look at them and I say, what is their future? What are they going to need when they graduate in 2035? Most of the jobs that they're going to have and their peers who are in school now have not been created yet. We, as a board, need to define what those kids need in order to succeed in life. And that's what I want to do on the board. It's imperative we, con we continue to give all of our students the academic, the social, the emotional, the communication skills, and the life skills needed for them to be achieved in our world. That we want to make sure that they're living and they're able to compete in the environment. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is extremely important now more than ever uh, in this COVID world. The world has become smaller for us, and kids can go farther. So our kids need that equal chance. It is with all this in mind that the future of all our students and putting students first as a member of the school board is important as a citizen's responsibility for the community's youth. In these challenging times for public education, school boards are seeking individuals like myself who find excitement and satisfaction in control, on confronting tough challenges and working collegially to rise above them and help students and their communities succeed above all obstacles. The items that have made me a success and would continue to make me a success as a Board of Ed trustee is as a person, I'm involved in many community educational groups. Just to name a few that I've done, 
Um, I am a member of the Meet Me in Marlboro currently, and I serve on their board as secretary. I have served as the advisory on the advisory board for Marist College Computer Science Department undergraduate and graduate programs. I've served on the graduate advisory board for Cornell University Active Worlds Computer Science Department. I've served on the regional advisory board for the Mid-Hudson Regional Information Center. I've also served on the Orange County and Ulster County School Boards Association, as I had mentioned previously. As a leader, I have been asked to present at keynotes at, at, keynotes at College of St. Rose, the SUNY New Pulse Principals um, Association and their trainings that they do for new principals on 2030, the future of education and the challenges ahead. I'm known to be a 360 3D thinker for innovations in school. This is an excellent um, quality I have found being on the Board of Ed for ideas to grow in our future and to help make our program sustainable. So as an, um, an information processor, I'm a valuable team player, and I research and plan every aspect to find out where we can go, and I have a contingency plan for everything. I'm the type of person that even has a contingency plan for the alternative plan. I'm always prepared. It is imperative to be ready for all things that can happen. In addition to that, I'm an excellent listener. So based on my training, my dedication, my perseverance, and my knowledge of education for 30 years, and the love of learning in our students, I would be honored to have your support to be reelected and proud to serve our educational community again for the next three years. With this being a tough race and five candidates that are all equally qualified, I encourage everyone to come out and vote. I thank you for your time, I thank you for listening, and I thank you for your support. I'm Karen Brooks. Please vote on May 17th, the last name on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Okay, next up is the budget hearing that Mr. Brooks referred to before. Uh, that would be Mrs. Mealy. Okay, so after several, several, tons of meetings, debates, and deliberations um, at the last board meeting. The board did adopt our 22-23 budget. As an overview, as required by state reg, um, we do the budget hearing where the community can look at the overview of our budget. We are very proud this year to bring in a tax levy with a 6% decrease. That is a $2.1 million reduction in the levy. Our overall proposed budget is $61.4 million. And again, a 6% decrease in the levy. So as shown in previous slides, how we came up with our $61.4 million budget between the tax levy, state aid, pilot, and using some projected fund balance. And just so everyone's aware, we, we did not I don't re recall us saying the contingency budget at the last meeting it was requested. It is a $59.8 million contingency budget should our budget fail for any reason. So the tax levy projected for this coming 22-23 school year will be $33.1 million. That is a $2.1 million decrease from last year. As previously stated, Last year, we did have a 2% decrease in the levy. So the $35.2 million that was collected last year was 2% less than the prior year. So New York State requires us to present the three-part budget. And if anyone can really see those numbers, I'm very impressed. And I want to know who your eye doctor is. <laughs> so, so it is posted on our website in you know, much more clearer fashion, as well as available in, in the back of the room if anyone needs it. But to help those like me who can't see those small numbers, the three-part budget includes the administrative budget, program budget, and capital. This year, we're projecting for administrative 5.5 million program, which is you know, the core of our charge here in Marlboro is 45.1 million. Our capital budget for the upcoming year is 10.8 million. All totaled, it's our 61,498. So tonight is May 5th, our budget hearing. The next important date to remember is May 17th, which is the budget vote. It's here in this room. If anyone has any questions on the budget, um, please feel free to 
email or call the superintendent or myself. We'd be happy to go through any questions you might have regarding the budget. So, like I said, voting happens here from 6 to 9. If you are in need of an absentee ballot, you can get them through the mail by notifying us by May 10th. You can come in person through um, May 16th here at Central Office. Um, if you <clears throat> are mailing your ballot back in, please make sure we have it before 5 p.m. on the 17th. Cindy Storno is our district clerk. Her number um, is posted on our website. If you have any questions regarding voting, please contact her directly. And like I said, everything is posted on our website, marboroughschools.org. Please feel free to, to go through the budget documents and reach out if you have any questions. And that is our budget hearing. All right, thank you, Roseanne. Anybody have questions? The, the only thing we didn't do, and I, I, I didn't get to ask at the last meeting, is normally we always break it down by Milton Marlboro and Middle Hope and tell everybody that it's an estimated tax number. We did not do it this year. Correct. I actually, um, there was a lot of discrepancy last year because of the um, valuation changes between the different municipalities and the estimates that we projected, which we've also done every year, were so wildly different. I actually told Rose I don't want those included because it was actually somewhat deceptive. So that's why it's not on slides. Uh -huh. It's not a required element, and I know we've always right. done it, and but it was so, it, actually it's been every year so wrong. Because the, so the public's aware, we don't have our final um, uh, numbers from the state for our equalization rates and our uh, property values until we get into the latter part of July, early August. Um, that's when we can actually calculate the true tax bills. Right. We have our rates that will be set based on the levy here, again, that's calculated in July and August. What we've traditionally done is we've taken the prior year's values and applied them to the current year levy to calculate what would be a projected rate, but they're so wildly different that it's actually deceptive. And, and I don't think that it's appropriate to put out hmm. deceptive information. I mean, so. it just gives people an idea, especially in such hard times it right really now. It really doesn't, though. It, it's so it's, wrong, it's not a good idea. There is a 6% reduction in the amount of taxes that we'll be collecting. How to apply that to what a person's actual bill, because that's what we would do. We would put together a $200,000 house and what it would be projected. Last year's example was wildly wrong because of the tremendous difference between the 2020 and the 2021 tax assessments. So it doesn't give a good idea. It's, it just doesn't. I, I know we've always done it, but it just doesn't. Yeah, it just, like I said, it just kind of like gives a rough of how much money you have to have come September. So, all right, thank you. Yeah, one of the, I think one of the points of that, too, to mention is that the valuations of housing is changing so rapidly right now that at any point in time, you can't even estimate it accurately, right? And, and then the way they did the assessments in the July, August time frame is also confusing with the three municipalities that don't always come out the way you think they would and logically so and there's time to catch up right so last year was a year of wild uh, swings upward but the assessment didn't catch up so we should see some of that so I, I, I to support what Mike says some of that is because of just such an erratic movement of valuations now as composed to as a, compared to some much more stability in prior years in all those three towns it's it's kind of hard to do it so What's worse, you put numbers out and then be wrong? Because you know what it's like when you put those numbers out, people kind of hold you to it, even though you explain over and over again what happens and then to get surprised. So I don't know, just want to support that. I, I, we didn't talk about it beforehand, but I, that's what comes to my mind when you talk about the challenges. All right, next up is uh, comments on the agenda, public comments on the agenda. If anyone out there would like to get up and talk about the consent agenda and the other recommended actions that are coming forward, please do so. Can you please uh, come up to the podium if you'd like to speak? I saw you raise your hand. Yes, please. Come up to the podium and please announce your name and uh, your residency in Marlboro. Not your address, but that you're in the district. Hi. 
good evening. My name is Cindy Lanzetta, and I'm a Marlboro School District mom and grandmother. And in fact, I'm going to have a student that will be in that 2035 class. So that's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, I also serve on several public boards, and I want you to know that I appreciate your service, and I understand that it is difficult and it is important to our community. In the beginning of March, I made a request under the Freedom of Information Act law and received incorrect documents. When I called this to the attention of the school officer and the school superintendent, the request was forwarded to another school officer to fulfill. After waiting two months for my initial request, I received additional information, but not everything I had requested. I think the process needs to be examined to conform to the law's requirements. I am in discussion with the Assistant Director of the Committee on Open Government for the Department of State, Kristen O'Neill. I have been speaking to her in regard to doing a training workshop for our town government boards. I would like to propose that we work together, the town and the school board, to offer this workshop for our board members and staff. I would appreciate it if the school board would consider appointing a member to work with me to set up a workshop on a day and time that would be convenient to our boards and the Department of State to come to this building and conduct an educational seminar on open meetings law and the Freedom of Information Act. So that's uh, what I came here this evening to request. and. Um, I want to thank you again for all of your hard work. Thank you. OK, thank you for that. Anybody else? Ralph? Is an item on the agenda for renewing the Middle Hope lease. Can you tell us how much the new lease is going to be, dollars and cents, and how much of an increase it's going up? We'll be able to pull that together and um, put that out at a future meeting. Okay. Okay. And my other question is not an agenda item. Uh, but several years ago, I served as a citizen on the selection committee for a new superintendent. Uh, I know we're going to be looking for a new superintendent shortly, and I'd like to uh, be appointed again as a citizen on the selection committee. Okay, just for that information, for everyone's sake, too, is we have been we have put communications out there for anyone who would like to participate in that community uh, interview committee to uh, send an email or call Teresa Laria and let her know. We are in the process of compiling a list of all those interested, and we're going to select about 12 or 14. And this time, we're doing it a little bit different. We're, there's going to be uh, representatives from various groups, community members, parents of students. And then there's like teachers, some of the administrators, some of the other like uh, paraprofessionals. It's a list of about six different groups to get a, a broader view of not only staff and, and, um, and people who work in the school, but also the community outside. So please, we're, we're in the process of collecting that information now, Ralph. And I knew you told me already this. So if you're not already on that list, let's put Ralph on and uh, we have his contact information. So. And I would like to just say that I think the committee, uh, when we selected our current superintendent, made the right selection going through the process. And it was quite a detailed uh, process of selecting. And we're really using the same process, actually, that we did that time, it, with a few variations. But Frank Malazzo Milton, 
Um, Mike, in all due respect, there's not a document attached to the agenda that's here for the public. The board is going to vote on a lease. It, the lease doesn't give a dollar amount. Well, but why would we have to wait for a, a dollar amount? It should be in a document that's here tonight. It is. Okay, but what's, in the, the, what's the dollar amount I, that's I on the agenda? Yeah, in the, in the printed doc, the one that's here, though, it's not available. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. mean, he's asked for the, what the new lease cost is, Ralph asked for, and it should be in a document that's here tonight. Absolutely. It's I something I, that. I know I was going to yeah. talk about. Thank you. Rose, can you, can you tell me what is the rent that we will be getting from the Middle Hope School lease with Orange Elster Boses? Yes, the new lease over yeah. the three years, it's $160,000, 10 monthly payments of $16,018 $16, a month, plus a $75,000 maintenance fee. The maintenance fee is the same as it was in the last three-year contract. The last three-year contract was $137,000. And is that an increase over the prior lease? Well, we've only, the, the rent. Second. Yes, it's a $3,000 increase. $3,000 increase. A month. Thank you. A month. A month. Yep. Thank you. So, just so I understand, what was the issue? Because we're reading so the it question out. that Rose was answering that I asked her was what is the lease that we are, what is the rent we are receiving from Orange Elster Bosis for the Middle Hope School? Right. It's a $3,000 per month increase from the prior lease. The lease total is $160,181 payable in. 10 installments of $16,018. Right, which we're reading right off our attachment. So is Correct. that the, the data? There's another. We don't print the full set oh, of documents okay. here. So anybody that I picks see. up an agenda here doesn't have the full set of documents. I see. I see. It is in our online. Portal. Okay. Okay, I understand. Now, I was wondering when he asked the question of why when I was looking at it. So gotcha. I knew it would be a question. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you. We got clarification. Any others from the public, public comment? If not, we will move on to consent agenda. Recommended action resolved that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools approves the contracts, agreements, and reports as presented. Personnel recommendations, official Board of Education meeting minutes of April 7th and April 21st, donation, claims, audit report for February and March, lease renewal for Middle Hope Elementary School, equipment disposition, CSE and CPSE reports. Can I have a motion? James, second. Joanne, any discussion about, the, about anything to consent to, Joanne? Okay, hold on. The equipment that we're getting rid of, equipment are, we, are we selling it or is it being donated? What are we doing because there's um, new units, um, music equipment. All equipment that gets uh, disposed after the Board of Education um, approves the disposition, if it's not usable, it goes to a recycling process. If there's any level of usability, it goes out to an auction. There's an online auction. I don't know if there's a specific item you're speaking to. I know that um, I had a conversation with uh, Mr. Cavazza and some of the items that are specific to the O&M department, they're being the things that are still auctionable will be auctioned. If it's not, if it has zero value, it will be recycled um, or donated. Uh, well, because you know me, I mean like the chairs, the student chairs and stuff. So my thing is if they don't go to auction, is there any way that we can give them to like Goodwill or Absolutely. Habitat for uh, Humanity? Typically if it gets to the point the where music? it's at this level, it's they're they're a, a safety hazard so if it's mm -hmm. got a label on it that is a um, inventoried item it has to go through this process in order for us to dispose of it if it's just a chair that's just broken and there's no inventory right, then, to it right, it doesn't it goes go to the garbage but yes right. our standard practice is to try to get some numeric some value for it by selling the item or donating it to a charitable type organization and last really is recycling or throwing away. Yeah, like I said, there's some stuff on there, the storage units for the music and stuff. Like I said, if they don't sell, maybe we could give them to Habitat 
uh, for humanity, and they can sell it yep. and make money for other families. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions on a consent agenda? James. Um, I didn't want to send this beforehand to pull it out because I don't know if I believe we should pull it out. So I just want it um, in regards to the Middle Hope Elementary School lease um, with our superintendent retiring, are we better off doing a one year lease and letting our new superintendent start something in a three year cycle next year um, rather than locking them into a three year lease that they did not we're not a part of signing. So to um, give you a perspective, it's a, um, it's a, they're always long-term leases, but there is an out clause in there for a school district. If we want to use that school for any purpose, we can notify BOCES so that they would vacate the property and we would get it back. Um, and as far as the rates go, it's actually not really a negotiation. They have a per square foot rate that they determine and negotiate with all the school districts that they rent from because it's not just Marlboro they're in a lot of different school districts so that there's equality to how the rates are determined and the increase is also included in the budget that they present as part of the BOCES budget that we vote okay. on. So as long as that's the process. if the new superintendent felt like we needed the space we have an out then I'm fine going with three years. The, yeah. We've always had an out clause in it and it's it's more for us for if we need it as a school we wanted to ensure that language was in the contract from the get-go um, and uh, it's there sorry just to piggyback on that how much notice would we have to give if we needed the property back for like, what, what, how many, I'm sorry. I would I would so I mean I if you want to if you want to table the item get me your questions and then we'll research the answers to the questions or read the lease. Um, it's can, not we, in the lease. We can, we can vote on this at the next meeting, but I, it's the same exact lease that we've had. So if you want to make a change, table it. And then we can meet at a future time to discuss what changes you'd like. I, I can't answer on the fly questions without stopping the clock and it's just it's not clearly laid out in the lease that exit clause I understand so so the only way we should do this then is to table the item send me the questions that you have and we'll go through that okay so then would I have to make a motion to remove that item table. from motion to table yes table this from the consent we need to remove it from the consent agenda to correct. table it don't we just correct so we have to so we have to do to it in two steps or just table the one the middle hope lease yeah i'm just trying to make sure we, if we need to do we need two motions or we can just do so it someone one. needs a motion to amend the okay. consent agenda to remove that from the consent agenda into and recommended put it on to or can we just put it right on just to in next perusing meeting. very quickly by the way I'm reading a statement that says under education law we are able to cancel the lease if there's a substantial increase or decrease in pupil enrollment substantial change in the needs or requirements or any other change which substantially affects the needs or requirements that's a nice ed rule but I think we should if there's this this is not a good forum for back and forth yeah. so I want to make sure your questions are answered so let's take it out get me your questions and we will answer your questions okay so then my motion is to remove the middle hope lease from the consent agenda and put it on to the board meeting for May 19th okay anybody second that Karen that's how proposed it. Yours is Mike seconds it. All right, any, any other discussion on this? All right, let's vote. Faith? Yes. James? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Michael? Yes. Trish? Yes. Karen? Yes. Myself, no. 
Okay. Now we need another motion to table it. To the next we right. do that into or recommended one. action. Oh, I thought we had to do it in twice. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So let's. Uh, are we ready to vote on consent agenda? As is without the lease. Yeah? Okay. Faith? Yes. James? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Mike? Yes. Trish? Yes. Karen? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay, we have one recommended action for summer transportation contracts. Resolved that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, approves and authorizes the signing of the transportation contracts as presented. Can I have a motion? James, second. Karen, any discussion? Okay. Yeah, I just um, have a question of why we're approving from 2020 and 2021. Um, we're doing 20 and 21. It was an oversight in the office. 2020, we didn't have any summer expenditures because of COVID. And honestly, with meeting all the other COVID mandates, it did, it did slip through the cracks in the office. And that's why we're now following up and making sure that we have all our contracts approved. I didn't hear you. What did you say about 2021? 2021, since we didn't do 20, it wasn't in our, in our routine and it really was an oversight. So there was no expenditures in 2020, but we still need to have an approved contract. And the 2021 contract was just over, slightly over $100,000. And it's only for summer. It's not summer transportation contracts are separate from school year contracts. All right. So that's why it's a dollar for 2020, because I was going to ask that question. It's right? an estimated a dollar. It actually was zero. Yeah. You have to have something in there. Karen? I, I just have a question. Um, if we were a school district that had our own bus system, and I, this is kind of a hypothetical, um, we would have all kinds of reports and um, finance and, uh, and reports on um, how the buses are um, looked at, inspections and things like that. And there's like a class C report that you would do. And parents um, are given uh, the opportunity in these different types of reports to give feedback to um, busing problems and incidents. So my question is, is since they're under a lease and they, we don't really own them. Do the same type of circumstances take place when we lease busing from a company like that as if we owned our own buses? So Because there's a lot of to, problems on the buses. That's why I'm asking. We're going to have to get back to you on that, but I would appreciate the question in some type of written form so I can I'll write it up for you. Get it's, just, it's something that came up when I was reading this at the beginning of the week. The regulations are different yeah. when you lease versus own. And I was just wondering, because I, I like the fact that when you own your own bus company, like you own your own buses, the parents actually can give input back to it. And I, it just seems that since we're leasing, they should also, because you're supposed to publicly announce um, when you're doing that so that parents can actually put input into the state when they're redoing their inspection purpose. And it would seem that the parents should have the same right to do it when we're leasing as well, especially with some of the problems that we're having. What I would suggest is any parents that would like to give input regarding any of our programs, whether it's transportation, food service, or an instructional program, is either contact me, come to a board meeting and make a statement. Don't wait for that. So if there's something of that need, please come to us. Yeah. And it's, it's like I said, it's done through the state and it's right. done here. Like and that's always. Uh, I'm going to be sarcastic, so efficient through the state. <laughs> I think yeah, we, we can be an is. awful lot more effective if someone has a issue that we would, that they would like attended to, come to us. Okay. Yeah. I'll write it up and send it. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't do that earlier because usually I do that. It's okay. Okay. Any other questions or conversations about the summer transportation contracts? Okay, let's vote. We'll start this way. Karen? Yes. Trish? Yes. Mike? Yes. Joanne? Yes. James? Yes. Faith? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay, next up, does anybody have any new business? Joanne? Okay. When I was going out and handing out the papers for the superintendent search, one thing that a lot of people in the community did say, they don't know when the vote is. 
So is there a way we used to put banners up, like on 9W in front of the high school? Can we get the banners put back up or little signs up on 9W that says May 17th is our vote? Doesn't have to say other, you know, other than that uh, is a district-wide vote at the courthouse. Um, we haven't done it for a while, and I think that's why our numbers are also low, because every, everybody said, well, when's the vote? When's the vote? If you don't have children in school, we don't know when the vote is. So can we please start putting the banners back up? So every resident will be getting our budget newsletter. If it didn't hit your mailbox today, tomorrow or Saturday, it'll hit it early next week. So every resident gets that. And then also our budget mailer card will be going to mailboxes as well. Well, I'm sorry, we incorporate that into the budget newsletter, but they're going to get it delivered to their mailbox. Yeah. I will talk with Mr. Cavazza to see if he has any of those signs. And, we and if not, we, I mean, they don't have to be big signs. I mean, so we and I will talk to Larry to find out if he has any other signs, and we will put those out, and we'll do our best. Yeah, because I mean, like I said, sometimes people get those flyers and they throw gotcha. them out. So, okay. how are you going to stop uh, that? I mean, well, like I said, but if we you put the banners up, we are personally delivering it, it, a very it, expensive piece of paper to every mailbox with all the details well, about I'm the so, entire budget. Like I said. So we will do our best to get some banners out. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any other new business? Old business. Other items? James? Or Mike? Well, James Franks, go ahead first, sorry. Um, just wanted to make mention, if parents haven't received in the elementary school, the PTA will be putting on a KISS dance, which is a um, kids invite someone special dance um, the beginning of June. So it should be coming home tickets go on sale um, this saturday morning they're getting with the 21st century and it's going to be online ticket sales so they're very excited about you know using new technology and um they're very excited to get the parents and the kids into the buildings to have a little fun so um keep an eye out for it thanks for that reminder james um Mike? june 3rd yeah, mine was just a, a comment. Um, the uh, the uh, baseball program is running a recognition day, uh, and, and I don't have the um, the piece in front of me. It's Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday about, and the game, I, the varsity game, it starts at yeah. four fifteen. It's a little some ceremonies prior. But to I would recommend that if we're going to do that in the future, that maybe we have it when the kids that were on those teams that were celebrating could be here. Many of them are still in college, uh, or you know, n not in the area, and they won't be able to attend. Um, it just seemed a little odd to me that, that it was that early. If we were put off, you know, another two or three weeks, then we could have had the kids that actually played on those teams be present for the, uh, for the ceremony. Oh. Somebody got to say something? We got Sorry. one more. We also have the art show up at Frida's is opening just for our art show right now. Um, I believe it starts, I'm not sure the date. Um, yeah. Katerina, that was in Katerina's report. Um, it's, uh-huh. Here you uh, yeah. the, Right, but that, it's opening actually before that, Frank, oh, no. and it's going to run for like the whole week, but the day they're doing the um, there you go. No. food and everything else to me, it is the day of the vote, okay. so, um, which is May 17th, I think it's the 15th it starts, at, oh, I'm sorry, the 16th, Monday. You can go look, because I guess they're setting it up, and it will run all week. So, and please stop by, because it goes through kindergarten all the way up to our high school. And it's wonderful the way to see the kids' artwork and the way it shines. So, come out and watch it and see it. Did I not read that? Here it is. You did. Well, it's MES. We'll be participating. That's where, why I missed it. The MES will be participating in the district art show at Freedies on May 17th. So you're saying it actually lasts for a week, yeah, right? I think. Okay. With all the teachers there, they'll have um, okay. I got refreshments on the 17th. Okay. From I think it's um, I don't know what, uh, from five to seven, and maybe we can get people to come out and vote on their way home, or on their way there. Good place for a banner. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> put one on, put it right up there with the art in the middle. I'm sure the art students will come up with something very creative. 
I just had one thing. I did mention it today uh, already during uh, one of the community members' questions, but a, a communication went out today by via many things, email, text, etc. that the Board of Education is seeking two parents and two community members to participate on the superintendent interview committee. Interested persons should contact Mrs. Teresa Laria via email. And that's all in this. I, I could give you the number, but I'm sure you're not going to write it down. So I'll just tell you, go on the website and you'll find uh, Teresa Larry in the central office. Um, we are probably going to get more candidates than two. Um, so we will have to, uh, you know, figure out a way to narrow that down to a reasonable group, but rather have more than not enough. So just putting that out there for the public, that, that, that we are actively doing that as one of the steps in the, pro in the process. So is there any other items? All right, so is up any other time for recognition of district residents? Does anyone else like to get up and speak? No? Okay, uh, there will be no executive meeting tonight after, the, after this regular meeting. So can I have a motion to adjourn? Karen? Second, Trish? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, thanks everyone. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>